I'll start today's episode with a side project I had almost forgotten about. For this we have to go back to early summer 2023. It was a simpler time. I recently moved my boats to a new spot, far away from civilization, immersed in a dense forest. I was building the steel structure of the cabin I'm now living in. I had just bought my late 60s East Germany luxury yacht and I had just received a new Bipulse MIG welder with which I was getting great results. I had some leftover steel so I decided to build a kitchen table out of it. I had just the right amount of materials for making this piece of furniture. It should be simple in design, yet well proportioned and robust. It should fit just as well into a luxury apartment as in a welder's workshop. Here I'm cutting up the four legs out of a single 90 by 90 mm steel square tube. With the four legs done and after positioning them upright, we can already envision the table. Here I'm laying out two of the legs to connect them with another flatter steel profile. Here too I just had enough material to cut the parts needed for the table with very little left over. As usual I'm employing rather crude methods to position the various parts correctly. In this instance I'm using short pieces of flat profiles with varying thickness until I achieve the desired positioning. In this particular case I'm trying to align the two parts precisely at the center. Next I'm going to use a tri-square along with two fastening clamps to arrange and secure the two parts at a precise 90 degree angle. Now I can go ahead and place a few tag welds. And I want to point out that welding without proper protection is downright stupid. Apparently at the time I didn't know better or I thought that somehow the rules of physics wouldn't apply to my skin. A lesson I learned the hard way shortly after. After placing tack welds on the other side and ensuring that the parts are at a perfect 90 degree angle and after double checking that the legs are still perfectly parallel to each other I proceeded to simply place another set of legs on top of the current one. By once again using very simple methods to arrange the different parts, I managed to create a perfect copy of the first set of legs. Now that we have the two sets of legs, it's time to combine them into what will very much resemble a table already. I'm using two beer benches to create a flat surface for the two halves of the table, so to speak. At this point I'm going to measure the diagonals between the four legs to ensure I have a perfect rectangle and not a parallelogram. I take two measurements on each side and only if the numbers coincide to the millimeter exactly do I proceed to the next step. Now I can add two tag welds at the top to just hold everything in place. Next I take some more measurements to ensure that the sets of legs are parallel to each other. Once this is confirmed, I add some more tag welds. And after doing the same on the other side, the base of my table is already assembled. This will look good with a tabletop made of any material, such as glass or wood, but I chose of course steel. Here however, I wasn't quite so lucky to find a single sheet of steel to cover the entire surface. Instead, I only had some scraps of 5mm sheet steel, so we took the largest piece and placed it on top of the legs. I would have to cut one side of it, but before doing that, I cleaned it with the angle grinder and a steel brush. Next, I pull a thread along one side of the table to precisely mark where to place the line for the cut. Then I use a steel square tube as a makeshift ruler to trace a straight line with a carpet knife, as this was the best tool I could find in this moment. After tracing the line, I do a dry run with the plasma cutter to get a feel for the logistics of this cut. I prepare the edge with the angle grinder to get a better start with the plasma cutter. As you can see, this method works quite well and with the square tube on the side for me to push against, I'm able to make a clean cut through this rusty steel plate.
Last year, I lost my apartment in the city and effectively became homeless. Thankfully, at that time, I wasn't boatless, so I didn't actually end up in the streets. In fact, nowadays, I'm quite comfortable on my boats and thanks to today's sponsor, Highland Titles, I can call myself the proud owner of a plot in the Scottish Highlands and contribute to the preservation of their rich natural heritage. And that's what Highland Titles is actually about. Every plot sold, no matter how small, is protected from the spread of farmland degradation. So what may appear as a novelty gift is actually a positive impact on our planet by helping to preserve the rich fauna and flora of the Scottish Highlands, including endangered species like the Pine Martin and Red Squirrel. As a perk for your contribution, you'll not only become a laird, lord or lady of the Glen, you'll also receive a luxury gift pack with personalized certificates alongside other interesting items. Visit highlandtitles.com, choose your plot size and, as a special offer for subscribers, use the discount code BOAT25 to get a 25% discount on your purchase. For the final part of the cut, I have my friend help me hold the piece so it doesn't fall down and disturb the cutting process. Now, if we have a closer look at this cut, you can see that it's quite clean, especially at the upper area. At the bottom there is some slack formation, but all in all, this is definitely one of the better cuts I've ever made with the plasma cutter. After cleaning it with the angle grinder, I can move on to adding the remaining parts of the tabletop. The next plate that fits best is this one, and it fits almost entirely, except for one small square at the top right area. But before we do that, we first have to cut away the excess material on this plate, Here too, we have a quick look at the cut, which looks good to me. And after cleaning the edges on this plate, we can focus on the little rectangle missing at the top. I simply place a larger part underneath it, trace the line for the cut and then cut it out with the angle grinder. Now we can take a first look at our almost finished table. Overall, I feel like I achieved my goal of creating a piece of furniture with a timeless design that can fit in many different places. My pursuit of millimeter precision has paid off, as we can see that all the legs are perfectly parallel to each other. Now, all that remains is to weld the parts together, starting with the tabletop. However, instead of making a continuous weld, for now, I'm only going to kind of stitch weld it together with tack welds spaced approximately 10 cm apart from each other. And by this point, it seems that I had already learned my lesson about getting UV burns from welding. From here on out, I would wear a cotton overall whenever I'm welding. To weld the leg structure together, my preferred method is to put individual welds one on top of another. This reduces the chance of the material getting too hot and warping under the heat and it gives a very stylish look to the welds. To add a practical element to the table, I'm going to add wheels with a stopper to each of the legs. I cut four pieces of a slightly smaller square tube that fits exactly into the legs of the table to which I'm simply going to weld the wheels onto. And now, all I have to do is insert the wheels into the legs and everything will hold together by force of gravity alone. 
This allows me to remove the wheels easily and convert the table back into a regular kitchen table whenever I need it, on a later date. And so here's the finished table. Now I have to say that aside from the table having been used for almost a year at this point, we also missed the perfect moment to paint it with Overtroll oil, so it turned out a little rustier than I wanted personally. But at the end of the day, this being steel, we can always sand it back down and even polish it and then put a coat of clear paint onto it to preserve a more shiny look. But anyway, for now, I'm gonna just keep it the way it is. Our next project is happening as we speak and it will take place here at the rear of the big boat where we are installing a raised floor. It's going to be made entirely out of wood and the core structure will be in a checkered pattern. On a total of 16 square meters, we plan to install our entire living quarters. Here are a few drafts of how I've imagined this so far. At the time we started, we had just moved into the big boat with our trusty steel yacht right next to it, mainly serving as kitchen and bathroom. We have just cleared a space on the dance floor for the beds. So now we can clear the room of all the stuff, moving everything out of the way. The first thing I'm going to do is set the height at which we're gonna place the raised floor. For this, I'm first going to place a wooden beam here at the back. Unfortunately, I didn't have one that goes over the entire length, so I had to put a few pieces together, which is not a problem. I made sure that there's a 2 cm space underneath the doors. With this, the height of the floor is determined by itself, basically. Next I'm going to attach the shorter, middle piece of wood, because that one can remain attached for the further process. The longer beams left and right, however, I'm not going to attach them just yet, because I need them to be loose at this stage of the project. I'm using self-drilling screws to attach these pieces of wood. And luckily, we have some steel square tube where we can attach everything onto. After preparing the long beam in the back, I'm going to attach another beam at the opposite end of the raised floor. Here, I was lucky enough to have a single beam available that would cover the entire length. First, I will measure the distance between the two pillars in order to accurately cut the required length for a single beam. I will attach L-shaped supports to provide a surface on which to place the beam. Here too, I'm using self-drilling screws. So now, I can position this beam at its final location. Next, I will clean the entire floor in preparation for applying a two-component epoxy primer. The orange liquid I'm adding here is the hardener and after properly stirring the paint, I can apply the first coat onto the floor. I must say, I truly love this epoxy primer. Even after just one coat, it completely covers the old paint. Once cured, it's very tough and leaves a plastic-like texture. Now that the floor is painted, I can reinstall the wooden beams. Next, I can begin preparing the longitudinal beams. For this, I first measure the distance between the two beams at opposite ends. Next, I embark on the journey of gaining a practical understanding of the floor before proceeding with any further steps. I'm adopting a highly practical approach to tackle this new challenge because working with wood is somewhat out of my comfort zone. Therefore, I position the longitudinal beams as they would be in the final setup, allowing me to anticipate potential issues before cutting and fastening all the wooden beams into place. Here, I'm positioning the longitudinal beams on top of the wooden beams at the front and back of the floor. During this process, I observed that the structural width is actually 3 cm wider at the back than at the front, and so I must take this difference into consideration when installing the floor. On the other hand, now that I see the beams laid out like this, I have a positive feeling about the project as a whole and therefore I now feel confident to proceed with cutting the beams. At first I thought I would attempt to cut them all in one go with the circular saw. 
I even purchased a brand new saw blade for the task. However, I quickly realized that this job was too thick for such a small circular saw and as a result it heated up badly and filled the entire room with smoke. Nevertheless, I managed to get the job done. However, for the remaining cuts I will have to consider a different method. I tried a combination of the Japanese saw and the jigsaw which turned out to be quite effective. For the next beams I tried to use only the jigsaw and the result was good enough so I believe this method will suffice for the remainder of the project. And my friends, I'm afraid this is all I can show you for this build at this point in time. Because some of you, my dear viewers, have expressed the desire for me to release videos more frequently and finishing this floor will take me at least another week, perhaps two and I don't want to rush anything just for the sake of getting the video out sooner. So this is the best compromise I could come up with. But rest assured, as the temperatures rise and the days grow longer, my video output will also increase most likely. Thank you for joining me and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.